Macy's is easily one of America's longest lasting, most iconic retailers. It goes back over 160 years, actually predating the Civil War, and you can't say that about many others. Given the timeline, Abraham Lincoln could have potentially shopped there, just think about that for a second. The simple fact that they have remained significant for so long is impressive, though I will say that the path that they have taken hasn't been quite as stable or as straightforward as you might expect. I am talking about some major ups and downs, but despite all the fluctuations and still being a major part of their industry, I'm going to call this an overall decline. I think most would agree that the Macy's name isn't quite as strong as it once was, and they have been on a downward trend. There is a decent chance that the Macy's near you has shut down over the past decade or so, considering that they have gone from around 800 to about 500 stores. And in 2020, they announced the closure of an additional 125 stores over the next three years. I want to point out that that announcement was made before the effects of the pandemic. Once the pandemic did take effect, their stock was removed from the S&P 500 because it had fallen to a point where their market cap was smaller than any other company on the index. The stock has since rebounded a bit, but still, plenty of evidence here to show that these have been troubling times for Macy's. So, for this video, I want to take a look back at this iconic retailer while highlighting some of their most significant rises and falls over the past my goodness, 160 years. Truthfully, there wasn't anything that I would consider to be too troubling throughout almost the whole first century, mostly just an impressive success story. A man named R. H. Macy opened a typical dry goods store in Manhattan that was named after himself. He sold only $11 worth of merchandise in his first day, but quickly improved to $85,000 within the first year and obviously continued growing from there. Other members of his family became involved, but by the end of the 1800s, control of it had been transferred to a man named Lazarus Strauss and his family already ending the involvement of anybody that had the last name of Macy. Some of the reasons behind the company's success over that first century would include their pricing strategy. And you know that thing where the stores sell something for like $1.99 instead of $2 to psychologically trick everyone into thinking that it's way cheaper that way? Well, Macy's was a pioneer of doing that. They also had a cash only policy, uncommon even at the time, but it ensured that they would receive that $1.99. By the 1920s, they were even hiring people to sneak over and investigate the prices over at competing stores so Macy's could set their prices accordingly. In 1902, they moved to their flagship store on 34th Street and went all out when they did it. It was a big store with all these fancy conveniences for the time, like escalators. In 1924, an addition was made to it that gave it the title of the world's largest store. I mean, this place became a tourist attraction and it has remained that way for over a hundred years now. They were known for their promotions, especially around Christmas time with their department store Santa again being somewhat of a pioneer with the concept. In the 1920s, they started sponsoring New York City's Thanksgiving Day Parade, now commonly referred to as Macy's Day Parade, giving them tremendous exposure right at the start of the holiday shopping season. And that was the decade they also started acquiring regional retail chains as a way to expand their reach into new markets throughout the country. A notable one of those would be Bam Burgers in New Jersey that later became one of their most profitable segments. By the 1950s, Macy's had grown into the largest department store chain in the country and then things started to level off. In 1952, they reported their first ever loss, and the following decades were up and down a bit, but mostly unremarkable. Just playing it safe and settling in as a well-known staple of American retail, you know, it was Macy's. They weren't thought to be all that exciting anymore, but you could always rely on them to do their thing and be there for you. Well, in the late 1970s, there was new leadership that started to shake things up. They made a few risky moves that proved to be successful. At the time, the efforts were being praised as the Merchandising Miracle, or the Macy's Miracle. Impressively, they increased sales and profits and just about every other key figure. Part of the plan was to remodel many of the stores, including the big one on 34th Street. They highlighted the most profitable departments while eliminating the least profitable ones. Simple enough. The more drastic change was their basement. It used to be a basic area for discounted merchandise or whatever, but they changed it into a unique shopping experience called The Cellar. It was an idea that had been introduced at their San Francisco location a few years earlier, and now they brought it over to New York. They filled the area with restaurants, food products, cookware, cooking 
demonstrations. No other store had anything like it, so it attracted a lot of customers. Also, in New York in 1976, a law was changed that suddenly allowed stores to be open on Sundays, which is a big shopping day. They said that many of their Sunday customers turned out to be women who went out shopping while their husbands spent the day watching football, so the extra day of business each week obviously helped raise their sales. Clearly, there are a lot of positive things happening for Macy's going into the 1980s. So now, with more people spending money at Macy's than ever before, they made some big investments to try to keep that momentum rolling. They increased their inventory levels to ensure that they would always have whatever product the customer was looking for. They increased their advertising expenses to try to attract even more people more often. They spent money to improve their customer service, they spent heavily to expand their private label brands, they even started opening new stores in the southern part of the country, including an especially big one in Dallas in 1985. To me anyway, all of this seems like a logical enough plan, reinvest in your business to try to make it even bigger. Well, what if I told you that the plan turned out to be so harmful that it kicked off a sequence of events that ultimately led to Macy's filing for bankruptcy in 1992? Yeah, that seems surprising, so let me connect the dots for you. The US economy slowed down dramatically, meaning people generally didn't have as much money to spend at Macy's or anywhere else. It was an issue throughout the entire industry, but especially bad timing for Macy's considering they had just raised their expenses so much and continued to do so, expecting consumer spending to quickly improve. It didn't, so the extra expenses did not translate to extra revenue as they had hoped, and their profits started to fall. Here is where it gets really bad. The falling profits motivated 300 Macy's executives to come together and take the company off the stock market in a $3.7 billion leveraged buyout. It added a ton of debt to the balance sheet. The reason the executives gave for the buyout was that Macy's needed to take some time to regroup and making them private would free them from the short-term pressures of the stock market. But also, it was potentially because their stock price had fallen quite a bit, making them a possible target for a hostile takeover, and the buyout was a defensive move against that. Then, this is where things get really, really bad, even though they were already in tremendous debt, in 1988, Macy's felt that it was a good idea to buy these two California-based retail chains for over $1 billion, adding even more debt. So I don't think you're surprised anymore when I say that Macy's filed for bankruptcy in 1992 with $5.3 billion in liabilities. Okay, that was the big moment that, in a way, I would consider to be the end of the original Macy's company. Also, ironically, it was an event that made them bigger than ever before. This is where things get messy. Through the bankruptcy court, Macy's was acquired by federated department stores. They were already the owners of multiple retail chains, the most notable one being Bloomingdale's, and the combination of these two companies created the largest department store company in the country. In a way, it almost seemed necessary to do that. Department stores were struggling to compete with rapidly growing discount stores like Walmart, so combining would ideally save money through economies of scale and allow them to better compete. So they continued on with that mentality, acquiring other major retailers, the most notable ones being Broadway stores on the West Coast in 1995 for $1.6 billion and made department stores in an $11 billion deal in 2005. Like I said, it gets messy here. There were so many different retail chains involved in these deals, some of which were resold, but many of them were converted into Macy's stores. Like I've been saying this entire video, Macy's is a strong, recognizable brand, so it made sense to make that the center of the company. So much so that in 2007, Federated Department Stores changed the company's name to Macy's. So that is kind of a weird path, right? Today we have a company called Macy's Incorporated that primarily owns Macy's stores, but it took a bankruptcy, a ton of acquisitions, and over a decade to get back to that point. Today, that company still owns about 50 Bloomingdale stores and 160 Blue Mercury stores. That's a store that they bought in 2015 that sells luxury beauty products that has since more than doubled in size. Both of those chains are similar seemingly steady enough, but it's the Macy's brand that has been dragging the company down, like I showed you, closing hundreds of stores, which is almost a necessary response to issues that have been happening throughout the industry. Clearly, department stores haven't been doing great because so many customers have moved their business to online or discount retailers. In fact, even though it has been falling, that $24 billion in sales still makes them the largest department store company in the country. And then having so many of them attached to shopping malls has been harmful because of the reduced traffic within malls again going back to the online shopping oh my goodness so the strategy has been to slowly close those underperforming mall locations in favor of opening smaller freestanding stores some of which are even branded as a different concept 
like Market by Macy's that was first introduced in Dallas in 2020. I also have to mention that they partnered with Toys R Us to open toy shop areas inside of their existing Macy's stores. So that's pretty cool. I know a lot of people have been missing Toys R Us since they closed all their stores, and that provides a unique reason to go and visit Macy's. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of Macy's? I think for many, it's one of these stores that you have to visit when you're doing your shopping for the holiday season. I know I always think about them when I'm watching that parade every Thanksgiving. I mean, it's Macy's. It hasn't been a perfect run, but you have to respect them for helping shape the retail industry in so many different ways and for remaining relevant all of this time. I do want to make it clear that there has been a lot left out of this video. Of course, I couldn't talk about everything that happened over their extensive history, but I do believe it has been an effective overview of their biggest rises and falls. Feel free to share anything else about Macy's that you might find interesting or relevant. If you are a customer of theirs, what do you like about them? What do you buy when you go there? And what do you see for their future? Will they continue to decline or will they figure it all out and exist as a smaller presence outside of the malls? What do you think is going to happen? And any other thoughts you have about Macy's, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.